In this episode of Voice of the Sea, we're on Hawaii Island, along the stretch of coastline known as Keokaha, learning about local ia, traditional Hawaiian fish ponds, and the partnerships that make the local ia in the district of Hilo so successful. We visit with community organization founders, educators, and a communications officer, all taking on cultural responsibility to steward these special places. We're facing Hilo Town here and our two maunas, Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, the two mountains that feed this coastline with all of the fresh water that contributes to the coastlines here. Hilo is known for many, many, many lokoya, numerous of lokoya. So we're actually in the Ahupua'a of Waiakea and Waiakea is defined as broad waters. Uh, Akea is like wide and broad and vast. And Vai is fresh water, so it's talking about all of that fresh water. A lot of the water is groundwater. When we say Waiakea, it might not only be speaking to just surface water, but how, how vast and how wide the water is underground. Without fresh water, Lokoia do not exist, right? And to think about Waiakea and this place being a place with lots of water, it already opens the door to help you understand how many Lokoia might be available in, in, in this area. This is Hui Ho'ole Malu'o's foundation. This is where we started. This is also where we grew up, all of us founders. There's three, three of us, Manoa Johansson, Nahoku Kahana, and myself. We began to restore the Lokoia here. And then when we were in college, we, you know, there's scholarships and there's all of these different opportunities for school and you have to do volunteer work. And so this is where we began to do our volunteer work as students. So we did various things from rebuilding the rock walls and doing water quality, like measuring salinity and temperature and oxygen, doing volunteer work here that grew into understanding more about this space and wanting to share. And so that turned into us reaching out to the different schools to see if they would want to come down as field trips to learn about the space, to learn about the different vahipana, and then to partake in the restoration and the cleaning of, of the space and this is a county beach park so we worked a lot with the county in the beginning stages we just jumped in you know it was just like intuitive you know we just we just jumped right in and we started cleaning it because we said oh this is there's potential here we can raise fish we see fish we see lots of rocks you know Haleolono down the road is raising fish we could do the same thing so we started doing that and eventually we started getting questions by some officials and then we said oh we better go in and talk to the county and we talked to the county and the way we approached it we said you know this is our home uh, we are going to take care of this place no matter what we know we are responsible for this place, so we want to work with you and to figure out what are the things we need to do to maintain this relationship and maintain um, the relationship that we have with the space and the way that we're working towards and working with kids and kids being here and us moving around rocks and um, being a part of the, the park's uh, progress. And so our approach and the way that we're communicating with the community and how to care for the space, that was like priority number one. That's one thing that we learned from Kupuna is that, you know, the fish pond is often a reflection of the community. And that's Hui Ho'ole Malu's vision in a sense, thriving communities through th thriving ecosystems. If our ecosystems are thriving and healthy and they're cared for, then that is a reflection on the community that lives within those immediate areas, right? When we first started to take care of this lokoi'a, it was almost like taking care of our front yard, you know? <laughs> and I think these are things that Kupuna were doing naturally every day, right? Being out in the space and learning about the space and being so intimate with a place so that that place can care for you and you know how to care for that space. The word lavaia, have you guys heard that word, lavaia? So lavaia is like a fisherman. People say that's like the literal, literal translation, lavaia is a fisherman. But if you break up the word, right, lava means enough and ia is fish. So if you're a lavaia, then you're, you're someone who only takes enough fish, right? So it's not only the literal translations that make sense, right? It's, it's about that word teaching you how 
to live that mm -hmm. type of practice. Even like the makaha for the loko ia. The maka are the eyes, right? So it is the eyes of the fish pond. Ha is your breath, right? So breathing, and it speaks uh, it speaks to the fish pond being able to breathe. And, and um, ha is also four. So we know that there's two high tide and two low tides every day. So it breathes four times a day, right? Without that, that happening, then the pond cannot filter, it cannot clean, right? So the language really provides you the clues and provides you with a pathway and how, how to live sustainably in these systems, right? It really opens the door to um, understanding how kupuna live. When you use the name, you're understanding what that place is telling you. You understand the meaning of that name because it, it unfolds the functions of that space. And so that lifestyle comes back to life. I would just like to know about your, your role here. I would say I'm a kia iloko, and a kia iloko is basically a fish pond caretaker. The fish pond doesn't only feed the fish that is in it, but it also feeds the the plants and the the birds and the animals that lived around the fish pond. What does the caretaking involve? The basic uh, caretaking needs is water quality, the fish pond maintenance, so the different walls that we see around the pond, the plant life that grows around the pond, checking about the sediment in the water, the, the fish count. Can you tell me about the history of this loko ia? Yeah, Honakea loko. Now people see it as, a, as this like small, about one acre fish pond with the rock wall. And the, the rock wall was built around the 1920s by Mr. Richardson. And the rock wall kind of solidified his property boundary. The wall today is built with cement. Honokia Loko before what it is today was taken care of by the Malo Ohana. And the Malo Ohana are the original caretakers of, of the fish pond. We say that Honokia Loko now is in phase three of what it's been through over, over time. We know that there was a fish pond wall about 30 yards or so from where the wall is now. That wall in the late 1800s, we like to say was phase two. And phase one of Honakea Loko, we're told that the wall was spanned the whole bay, so from point to islands to point. The all, all of Waiuli, we're told at one point, there was a, it was the fish pond. Is there other history or place names that you think are important for our viewers to know about? Hona kea, if we break that down, hona, hona means bay and kea means white. So out in the bay, we're told that there was a a significant amount of white sand, enough that it would have that name. Yeah, so if we know this area and most of this coastline, it's, it's full of black sand. Onakea tells us that the reef system in this area was healthy enough that it would go through that whole process from polyp to to full coral growth and then all the way down to erosion and to create the sand. But the, with the revitalization of using the name, we see the sand coming back and we like to see that correlation of using the name, using the function of the name, the aina is gonna respond. Honokea sits in Waiuli and Waiuli talks about the amount of fresh water, so vai, the amount of water can tell you how much people can live in this area, how much people can feed off of that resource. So Waiuli was a, a highly resourceful area to get water. Do you have a goal or a dream for phase four? As we see like through that progression, the, the fish pond came smaller and smaller. Now, I, I wouldn't want it to get even more smaller, but hopefully phase four is to a point where the fish pond itself can reach the, the full cycle of sustainability. You know, um, raising fish, observing the fish, maintaining the, the population to a point where people can come and 
harvest and eat from the fish pond. We haven't enacted that part yet of full harvest, so that's hopefully what phase four could be, yeah. What needs to happen before you can reach that full cycle? We're not at a, a point permit-wise. There's no process that, that's available to harvest and eat from a county area. Uh -huh. Yeah. So maybe that's a process that we could create and, and give to other fish ponds that are in the, the same partnerships like we are. The University of Hawaii's Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant. You're watching Voice of the Sea. We're at Kao Maui, a three-acre site in Keokaha with many local vai, or freshwater ponds. In February 2021, Hui Ho'ole Maluo began working with teachers and students to rehabilitate these community resources. Aloha, my name is Shari Frias. I am from Wailuku on the island of Maui. I currently live in Puna and I work in Keoka at Kaumeke Ka'eo. I am the intermediate and high school science kumu for Kaumeke Ka'eo. Our school is a Hawaiian immersion school. We're located in Keokaha. Our big focus is using Keokaha as our learning laboratory for our students, using our coastline, using our aina in, throughout Keokaha as a place to learn. So our keiki and our haumana are connected to a space and they are learning that they need to contribute to this space and that this is a part of them as much as it is a part of us. And we're in the beginning stages of revitalizing this space. And so it's important for them to see what it looks like in Ground Zero. And it's important for them to see that the science that we do here, the cultural ceremonies that we do here, the knowledge that we learn is going to increase the value of this space for our community. And so it's important for us to have this pilina for our keiki. And it's important for us to have many different spaces to speak Hawaiian, because in the school, we're not necessarily using the vocabulary used to pass the rocks. We're not using the vocabulary on what type of rocks there are. We're not using the vocabulary on the specific names of where the function of the rock goes in. We're not using the vocabulary maybe for all the things to the lokoia. So it's important to take the olelo into a different space so that they can learn the vocabulary for these spaces. Some of the things that we've been working on is collecting water quality. We're starting to look at the oxygen levels we're looking at salinity, we're looking at temperature, we're mapping, we're beginning to map the sediment levels, how much sediment is in certain areas so we can measure our progress over time. We're trying to uncover where are our punavai, our water sources uh -huh. coming from. We can't find them because they're in, covered in sediment. Something else we're trying to map is we have ama ama, which is our main fish supply for sustenance in these ponds. According to Ike, that scientific ike that I know of, there may be something else I'm not aware of, but our fish need 15 parts per thousand to reproduce. And as of right now, these loco are in two parts to three parts per thousand in that range. So if so, we need to discover are our ama ama actually adapting and reproducing here and we're unaware of, or are we having to stock our fish ponds? So that's something we're trying to figure out and we're trying to map. When we see these rise, the rise of the tide, it's not ocean water, it's mostly Punavai water. And we partner up with Cherie, and she's done extensive research on water. She can track where the elevation this water is coming from, how old this water is, where is our forest that we need to malama to make sure that the vai here is all good. And we're trying to see what we got in our local, what kind of fish we got, what kind of little critters we got, bacteria perhaps, any kind, any kind. We're just really exploring this space. Explain to me what the keiki we're doing with the the pohaku, the rocks. So our keiki are halihaling these pohaku. We're building mala or garden beds 
to plant kalo and uwala to use either at the ending of our year in our symposium when they present to their ohana their findings. And we also use various food for makahiki. While I was living on Maui, I have little to no information or background on Lokuia. It wasn't until I moved to Hilo, where Ho'olei Maluho has partnerships with the university. And so I started coming here as a student in the university. And then when I graduated and became a teacher, I already have that connection. I'm bringing my kids over here. And because we're in Keokaha, Ho'olei Maluho partners with a lot of other schools and, and, we, and they partner with other um, kia'i that take care of other lokoi'a and we compare all of our findings to try and make this coastline more productive so that this can be something that we can use to feed our community in the way that it did before. And our kids need this space. Many of us don't have access to aina where they can plant, farm, farm fish, farm plants. And so it's a win-win situation. We are looking for a few heroes, mentors, trailblazers, innovators, a passion to change lives, spark curiosity, open hearts, and awaken minds, help students answer the question, who am I? This could be your calling, but this is no job. It's the journey of a lifetime. Be a hero. Be a teacher. You're watching Voice of the Sea. We're at Haleolono Loko Ia, which the Edith Kanaka Ole Foundation has managed since 1996. Talking with Communications Officer and Kia'i, Luca Kanaka Ole. Almost every system around the world, especially, especially here in Hawaii, whether you're talking about a lo'i kalo or a loko ia, freshwater flow, constant freshwater flow is everything. Wherever you're gonna find fresh water injecting inside of the coastline, those are gonna be the priority spaces to kind of build your local eat up. Our kupuna saw how, how effective they are in, in growing algae, how they're effective they are in, in, in nurturing microorganisms, and how effective they are in securing smaller fish and acting as nurseries. They saw that natural phenomenon occurring and they said, you know, we can, we can create our own estuaries. And thus came our local eat system. The most common way is the kuapa is where we built the the rock wall or we mound kua aina, we, we build a kua aina to not stop the fresh water from going into the ocean. You know, we always want that constant flow, but it's to just slow it down. Uh -huh. By slowing it down, you, you allow the mixing of the fresh and, and the salt water, you allow the micronutrients to grow and all that algae to grow and you allow that all of those smells of that activity to recruit fish, to, to attract fish into this fish pond and thus not only making the fish pond healthy and active and, and abund, abund, abundance full of fish but also making the entire coastline surrounding the fish pond very, very healthy fishery. I look at it as a... Um, as a, f a fad or a, f a fishery fish aggregation device you know uh -huh. so you know when you go out into the deep ocean most people try and find floating objects or buoys a lot of fish are going to be attracted to these to these objects in the deep sea well the same thing can be said for these for these spaces you know when you have a lot of activity that a, like a fish pond has other fish are going to be attracted to that activity you go into the reef system and you see a large coral a large coral head and the activity inside the coral head attracts other fish to come near that coral head as well. So as long as that system is healthy and maintained, all these different fish are going to be attracted to that place. That system or that phenomenon has been observed by our ancestors and has actually been, been passed down through, through different stories. The story of Ku'ulakai, for example, Ku'ulakai is the, the man who created the first fish pond. And he had the ability to place a rock inside the water and chant fish towards it. People can say that, oh, this man had magical powers to, to chant fish towards him. You know, that's, a, that's an amazing story that can be passed down easily. But if you analyze the story a little bit deeper, you realize that, you know, we're all kuula. We create these rocks and we create that system in which fish can be aggregate towards. And that's the local system. One challenge I would say 
that has been difficult to realize, and I think every fish pond is going to feel it, is that the water levels are constantly getting higher. We used to see kink tides maybe once or twice a year. We're seeing it almost every month, you know, every other month. And so our walls need to get higher, our walls need to get wider. Those are difficult challenges that not just us, but every fish pond practitioner is going to have to deal with across the Pai Aina. The knowledge we get from managing these systems, we can pass down and we can we can hopefully adapt to whatever our natural resource gives us or whatever our environment gives us. So if the water ends up being up there, up Mauka, we can build a new lokoia up there and just adapt to our islands. And that's what our, that's what our kupuna were very good at. And we need to kind of get back to not just being scared of the changes, but just being ready for it. Uh. Yeah, you yeah, know. The primary use of this place is to kind of aid in our observational skills and our research methodology. And one of the primary research methodology that we do is Papakumakavalu. To summarize, Papakumakavalu is a method in which to analyze our resources and our environment and our universe through the scope of our, of our kupuna. So we take chants and we take mele and we take stories that our kupuna passed down. We dissect and analyze what they were observing. And by doing that, we can kind of reintroduce um, how we connect with our resources. We give life to our resources, we give language to our resources. Better to understand how we interact with them. Our primary responsibility here is just to maintain the health and the flow of this fish pond. What it attracts out there, it's not, it's like, I can't, it's not up to us. As, as cool as that would be. This, this larger fish pond has, you know, all these myriad of reef fish. It's actually a quite colorful pond with all these types of surgeons and, and parrot fish. And these, all these like different populations of fish exist in this tiny little pond. You know, we do harvest once a year um, out of this fish pond. And the things that we do harvest either goes to our our hula halau, halau kekuhi, for their ceremony. And the rest goes to community members that has either, you know, helped out with the, with the fish pond or helped with the harvest and helped build our, maintain our fish pond. And kupuna uh, as well that, you know, can't eat, catch fish on their own. You guys do a community work day every month? Every month, yeah. We do a community work day every second Saturday of the month from 9 to 12. Anybody can follow us at Haleolono or go to our website to kind of reserve their spot to come to the work day. I think like most fish ponds, we depend on our volunteers and we depend on our presence to maintain the health of this place. This place is a, it's real difficult to secure funding or, or, or whatnot. For me, you know, I keep coming to this place because it is a kuleana. I grew up on this fish pond. The health of this fish pond has always been in my mind and I don't feel comfortable being away from it for too long and I need to constantly make sure this place is healthy. But it's one of those things where you, if you don't maintain it or you don't visit it enough and it turns into something else, you know, will you regret it? I don't really want to know the answer to that, <laughs> you know, so yeah. So there, it's more of a kuleana to this place. The Loko Ia and Keokaha give monthly updates to the Community Association, and you can tune in to learn more. Community is the backbone of successful Loko Ia, and partnerships that engage our local youth are essential for sustainability. Get involved in Loko Ia restoration or start a group in your community. You can also learn more at voiceofthesea.org. And follow us on social media at Voice of the Sea TV. Mahalo for watching Voice of the Sea. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org.